Hello. Uh, I've been in bed the last couple of days, dying of something. Going between shivering cold and burning hot. I still feel a bit terrible this morning. But for some reason I want to do this for you. Her Majesty's Treasury, so we're talking the United Kingdom. Newsroom and speeches, 9th of November. Changes to cash management operations. If I remember me right, I, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I, it's quite interesting. On 9th of November 2012, the Government agreed with the Bank of England, Government agreed with the Bank of England, to transfer to the Exchequer the excess cash held in the Bank's quantitative easing facility. This will align the cash management arrangements for the facility with the normal government practice and with the approach followed in other countries undertaking QE. On the 9th of November, uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Governor of the Bank of England exchanged letters agreeing the cash management arrangements. And you can read those if you follow the link. I hope nobody does. Since 2009, the Bank of England has operated quantitative easing by buying gilts, gilts are UK government bonds, and holding them in a dedicated facility called the Asset Purchase Facility. These gilts attract regular coupon payments, coupon is the interest paid every year, coupon payments from the Exchequer, from the government. The government is paying them regularly to this, the Bank of England because the Bank of England has got the bonds. With the purchase of the APF having reached 375 billion which is over a third of all outstanding UK bonds, this facility has now accumulated a large cash balance. It's raking it in because it can buy them for nothing so it, it's an advantageous thing. As the scale and likely duration of the scheme has increased, scale and likely duration of the scheme has increased significantly since its inception. In other words, we thought we could get away with doing this once and then everything was going to go back to normal. But now it has increased significantly since its inception and its likely duration has gone out. It makes sense to normalise the cash management arrangements for the APF. Right, that's pretty dull stuff. So what I've done, I'm going to read you the next lot of that, but after I've done my thing. I was sitting here doing my thing this morning. So over on to the next one. Here we go. My thing. Next yellow triangles again. So I'm going to try and explain what's going on here. Government, the square thing. Banks, those two triangles, one on top of each other, and the central banks, the octagon, I think we decided it was. So they start off just hanging around normally, just being themselves. But the first thing I've, I've done, just to confuse matters, that doesn't have to happen like this, the bank can just buy out of its own uh, funds. But I've had um, the, the bottom bank borrow one Call it a billion in bonds. A billion. Yeah, we'll go with sell, have a, uh, play with a billion in bonds. So it's borrowed a billion pounds from the top bank, the top triangle. Now, I've put one and one, so that's now one billion and one billion in each bank because the top bank has um, got an IOU, st standard, as an asset from the bottom bank, and the bottom bank has got the cash. You know, the, the top bank just, it was fresh air money. It's dropped it down to the bottom bank and the top bank for its fresh air money, money has got a risk, uh, an IOU from the bottom bank. Yeah, standard as though it was you and I going in and getting a loan. So on the third one at the bottom, banks buy bonds from the government. So bank buys bonds from the government. So that the bottom bank buys a bond from the government. So the bottom bank that had one billion cash has now got one billion in bonds and the government's got one billion in cash. 
I think you should have followed all that. Unnecessary that I've, I've had the, the bottom bank borrowing the money from the top bank. But you should have got that. It's, it's borrowed the money from the top bank and bought a bond, bought a billion in bonds off the government. Right. Go over to the right-hand column. Central bank, bank, central bank buys bonds from the bank. So we've got a complete uh, roundup of what we've got now. The top bank has got the IOU from the bottom bank as an asset. The bottom bank has got cash because it's just sold its bond that he had the, they had in bottom left now top right they've sold that bond to the central bank on the right so the central bank on the right has got the bond and that was fresh air money from the central bank and they've given it to the bank in the bottom bank in the middle there so they've got the cash and the government on the left left still got the cash they're spending it merrily. Now, all of this could have happened in a morning and an afternoon, the way things have been going. It could have happened all in a morning. It could have all happened before first coffee break. And you'd get something like this. And in fact, we can go on. Banks pays off its debt. So the the bank has pay, bottom bank pays off its debt to the top bank. They're perfectly normal. This is the, the middle one on the right. So they've got their zero and zero again. But they've made, the top banks made a bit of commission on lending money out for two hours if we're having it done all, all before coffee break or you know one day or week, a month, whatever it might be. So the top banks made a bit of commission. That's where banks work. They have lots and lots and lots of these little commission things. And the bottom bank that dip, bought the bond and sold the bond to the central bank will have made a bit of money because they will have sold the bond to the central bank for a little bit more money than they bought it for. So they will have made a bit of money on that transaction. So the banks are out of it and we've only got, now got the government and the central bank going at it. W things uh, go on like this with the government, it's still spending its cash that it's got and the interest payments a four-year bond a five-year bond a 25-year bond whatever it might be for all that time will be paying the coupon that's the interest rate every year to the central bank and if one matures say, say they got bought a one-year bond early on in the crisis that will have already matured so you pay the the last well, if it's one year, you pay the, the coupon payment and the principal at the end of it. So the government pays the coupon payment and the principal to the central bank. So an awful lot of money is going to the central bank, and this is what this is all about. I've finished with this one at the bottom because what they're really deciding is that the CB pays it all back to the government. But this is norm, total normal stuff anyway. So all the money is paid by the Treasury, the coupons and the principals all paid to the central bank. The central bank will take expenses out of it and get, then give it all back to the government. Right. So I'm now going to read if, if um, I'm going to read the second part of this Treasury document, which is pretty boring, but I think it will round it off. I'll just read it. So if you want to stop now and go back to my stuff, my, my stuff's much better to look at than this. From now on, this excess cash will be transferred to the Exchequer, the Exchequer's the Treasury, on a regular basis. This will improve transparency and align our practices with those of major central banks like the United States, Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan. This is just what they do. These changes will end the current arrangement which requires the government to borrow money to fund coupon payments to the Bank of England. In other words, the <laughs> they don't actually, yeah, they do, I suppose. The government has to borrow money from the outside world, even more money, so they can afford to pay the coupon payments to the Bank of England. I don't know why they wrote that, quite frankly. Holding large amounts of cash in the APF, that's the Bank of England's um, asset buying facility, 
is economically inefficient as it requires the government to borrow money to fund these coupon payments. So what? At some point in the future, as monetary conditions normalise, this, uh, this is uh, hopefully we've we've always found this to be a bit of a joke. But I suppose they've got to go on with the idea that things will normalise. It is likely that cash flows will need to be reversed. Return payments from the government to the APF may be necessary to meet shortfalls in the APF's net income as the bank rate rises or capital losses on, it guilt, on its guilt holdings as the Monetary Policy Committee unwinds QE. I'll go to the end of the paragraph and then explain this. The previous government agreed that any future losses incurred by the APF will be met in full by the government. For this reason, any net coupon income transferred from the APF to the Exchequer should be used solely to pay down government debt. So I'll do that first and then the other. That's an um, important thing. The, As I said before, a couple of weeks ago when I was explaining this, the... the the Bank of England, oh, so sorry, I'm starting to lose my brain. The Bank of England said it's when we have to unwind this. In other words, interest rates start going up. The prices of the bonds that we're holding will start going down as we're selling them into the market. The prices will be going down. We will have overpaid for them. We will lose money on them. We do not lose money. The Bank of England central banks do not lose money. Uh, in fact, that's in the bottom, I think. Let's, to finish, let's get it finished. These changes will have no effect on the Monetary Policy Committee's ability to set monetary policy. The APF remains fully indemnified by the Treasury and all future gains and losses are due to the Treasury. In other words, when we have to start or do all this renormalization stuff, the Treasury will only have to pay that money back that we're now giving them. But I think the Treasury is betting, and I'm betting, that they never will have to. Because nothing will ever return to normal. It, that, that's not tragic. I'm not saying that things will explode. That's where um, the central bank had a balance sheet of this, and it went on for years. Now it just goes up to a new plateau. And it could, I'm not saying this is where, but it could just be a no, new normal, and it just goes on like that. Um, because what the central bank is its job is to normalize interest rates and the way it normalizes interest rates will be by selling um, bonds back into the market that's just the way they do things was the way anything else I wanted to speak of there probably was but I've totally and utterly lost it now so uh, that's vaguely interesting that um, oh yeah and the exchequer, okay, the last sentence of the second to last paragraph. For this reason, any net coupon income transferred from the APF to the exchequer should use solely to pay down government debt. Because initially, the Bank of England was saying, you're not having any of this money. We'll sort it all out when everything has been normalised. And we've done the addition and whatever money's left over, we'll give you. Or if it's made it been a huge failure and we've made a little big loss, then you'll pay us. But well, let's just wait until that happens. But the the exchequer, the the treasury said, no, gives the money now, gives the money now. So the Bank of England's gone. All right, we'll give you the money now, but we don't want you just to go using that to build roads or pay teachers. You only use that to pay down government debt. You can only directly use it to pay down government debt. How they're exactly going to work out what... Because it'll just go into the government account. It's all fungible. It's all money. How are they going to work out that that particular money goes to pay down government debt? And what are we talking of here? The the central banks uh, bought, a, what was it, 380 billion? So that's naturally quite a bit over a third of all outstanding debt. And the let's say profit made... Uh, it's not really <coughs> right to call it profit, but you could call it profit. The profit made has been probably 50, 
maybe yeah about 50 billion at the moment they're talking about that could go over to the government accounts and it will go into the government accounts as income just like it was tax income so that somewhere along the line there'll be a, a little blip up in uh, government income as though everything was turning out rosy but it, it's all because of these shenanigans bye